Hey guys, Ray from Lovey RV out uh, boondocking in Arizona. Join yourself. I thought this would be a good time to update you on the EcoFlow system that I started reviewing. It would be last January now. Uh, it was the EcoFlow Delta Max and it came with this 400 watt folding solar panel you see here. So I'll go through my likes and dislikes and let you know how it's performed over the last year. The system's actually become basically my favorite of the portable power stations I've reviewed. I reviewed a couple blue eddies and uh, Line Energy Safari ME. And the EcoFlow is actually the one that I choose to take camping with me, so I'll kind of let you know why. So let's get to it. Okay, so to start, let's go through my particular use case for the EcoFlow Delta Max. Um, our RV already has a powerful off-grid system with 940 watts of solar on the roof and a 420 amp hour lithium battery bank. But now I have a Starlink internet dish that I take with me uh, down south and it's a complete power pig. Uh, it's a first generation dish so it averages around 80 watts of power draw. Um, so that can add up as we use the internet often for internet access and nighttime streaming entertainment especially in the midwinter when it gets dark early and, and it's kind of cold outside, you come in and you like to watch movies and TV shows and maybe go on the internet, that sort of thing. So over the course of the day, that can really add up a lot of power. So I'm utilizing the EcoFlow uh, portable power station and its 400 watt panel as my primary power producer for the Starlink dish. Uh, I really like that the EcoFlow can recharge quickly using its AC input. So if the solar harvest is poor, which sometimes happens even in the desert, you get cloudy days and rain, that sort of thing, and short winter days. So with this generator running, in under 90 minutes of generator time, I can fully replenish that uh, 200, 2,048 watt hour battery pack in there. Versus, you know, other power stations that may have to run the generator a lot longer, maybe, you know, three or four hours on some of them. So that's a real bonus with this one. Um, I've also added a mod to my trailer uh, in, in the DC system. I can transfer power from my RV battery bank to the EcoFlow power station. Um, I added wiring, a fuse, and a toggle switch. And then I just plug it into the EcoFlow's DC input. So the wiring addition provides about a 100 watt charge, nothing great, but uh, it's enough to maintain power in the Starlink without using up the EcoFlow battery. So I can use that as an option or move power from my main battery bank, say overnight or something like that. Uh, the Delta Max has performed well for my needs and at this time it's my favorite of the power stations that I've had a chance to test out. So if I was really to, to want to buy a power station right now, I think that would be the one I would get out of the ones I've tested. Of course, nothing is perfect, so here's my uh, likes and dislikes lists for the solar panel and the power station after using it for about six months of off-grid camping, and even several months I used it on-grid. Uh, there was a time I was using it to, to power Anne's iMac computer as kind of a backup to the campground power. So let's start with the, the folding uh, solar panel. Uh, here's my likes. I like that it folds small enough to be carried in my truck's back seat. Uh, it's uh, it, the, the four segments fold up to just one segment and they're only around an inch thick so I can just lay it on the back seat and even put stuff on top of it. Uh, it's pretty lightweight for 400 watts it's 35 pounds so it's quite a savings in weight. Uh, last year I carried a bunch of uh, glass rigid panels and they got up to be 600 watts was so 120 pounds and I found that to be a, a little bit a uh, little bit uh, too heavy and it took up a lot of room in the, the back seat of the truck. So kind of a trade-off there. Um, it has a 40 volt output, so that helps because you can use a, a fairly thin gauge of wire um, and a long, a long way, long length of wire. So when you have them out on the ground for remote, remote use, it gives you more options. Uh, they have a waterproof panel design, and I've really put it to, te to the test back in BC. There was a lot of rain went on, and no problems there. Didn't damage it or anything. Um, you know, it's kind of crucial in the Pacific Northwest to have your, your 
panels to be waterproof. You can't be bringing them in because it's, it's raining a lot. And even in the desert, it rains once in a while. This year, we've had three or four good rains. Uh, for a folding panel, it's surprisingly durable, uh, though the plastic front material could be easily scratched or gouged by a sharp object. So you have to really watch that. You really have to watch you don't step on it or um, have it fall forward would be bad, especially in the desert with all the sharp rocks. Falling backwards is no problem because the back is just kind of a material and it doesn't harm it. I've had it fall backwards a few times, kind of slide down. Uh, the dislikes to this panel. I find the wattage output is a little lower than the rigid glass panels I've used by about maybe 25 to 50 watts. Um, the winter sun I'm seeing at low elevations in the winter sun with the poor angle, maybe 200 to 250 watts is what I see, even in the, in the midday sun. Um, during the spring sun at higher elevations, I was seeing more like 300 to 350 watts. And I think 350 watts is kind of what the manufacturer um, suggests that you would get out of it. Still pretty good, but you know, like I say, the winter sun, I'm not getting terrific amount of wattage out of it and I think the glass panels would perform a little bit better. Uh, the case the case turns into a kickstand for it and I think that's just a, a totally crappy solution. Um, it only really supports the middle two panels and the outer panels kind of flop around and the, the tilt angle is fixed so you can't easily change your angle you know based on the angle of the sun. However, since the complete panel weighs about 35 pounds, it works well when leaning against objects. So I have a table and a ladder and chairs, and I usually use them versus the their built-in kind of case panel. And I can also, with the grommets, I can tether it with bungee cords to make it handle a little bit higher winds without blowing around. Uh, the plastic case, the zipper, is flimsy, and I soon broke it. It's you know, it needs a, a kind of a more rugged zipper because that zipper is just, it got caught and little plastic teeth stripped out and that was it for that. Um, let's go move on to the actual power station. I'll go through some of my likes and dislikes uh, that I've figured out over the, the months. Uh, EcoFlow has an excellent smartphone app and the killer feature for me is the charging input wattage control between 200 watts all the way up to 1800 watts of charge speed in 100 watt increments. So that's really good because I can match my generator exactly to how much the generator can put out without overloading. So I can get max charge speed. Or if I'm charging, say, my front batteries as well, I can lower this charge down and kind of match it up. So I can always maximize my generator use. So um, I don't have to run the generator near as long to get get the juice into the system. Uh, it has a really nice small footprint and weight for the power provided. It's a 2400 watt inverter and a 2048 watt hour battery pack and it's in quite a compact size compared to other power stations like say for example the Blue Eti ones. They're a lot uh, they're a little taller and a little heavier. Uh, also there's no bulky AC adapter to worry about. I just have the single power cord um, same deal with some of them, like the Blue Eddy have these power bricks and you even sometimes need two of them if you want to maximize your AC charge. So all of a sudden you have all sorts of bricks and wires going everywhere where this is just has a real simple solution, one one uh, power cable. Uh, fans are pretty pretty quiet compared to others I've tested. I have it mounted in my, my uh, storage bay and I don't really even notice the fans when I'm inside. And also the firmware is upgradable and they have released updates to fix bugs and add features since I've had it. I'll actually show you, I just updated it the other day, maybe I'll show you a video clip of that. So one nice feature of it is with the app you can upgrade the firmware and they have been pretty good about releasing new versions of the firmware um, and in that they can fix bugs and add features, that sort of thing. I noticed in this latest one they're going to have a thing where if it becomes 100% charged, it'll stop charging and let the battery fall back down to at least 97% before it kicks on the charging cycle again. I guess that helps extend the, the lifespan of the battery. Because I have noticed when it reaches full charge and there's still solar charge happening, um, the box starts to get a little hot. I've seen it go up to a, 100 degrees when that's happened. So hopefully that'll fix that. Anyway, it's upgrading right now. I find the upgrade process a little flaky to get started. They sort of need the internet and the app 
and you have to connect to the app without the internet and then connect back to the internet so that it can download and do its thing. I find sometimes I have to go through that loop a few times before it finally catches. First time it kind of scared me because the box just went blank and all I got was a flashing light down there and I thought, oh no, I've ruined it or bricked it, but it just went through the process a few more times and it caught. So let's see, we're up to 94% here. Here we go, upgrade successful. Checking for updates. It's back working, there we go. We're up to date. Okay, so let's get to some of the dislikes or downfalls of it. Uh, the UPS functionality, <clears throat> the switch over from grid power to battery inverter power is limited to 30 milliseconds. This is the time, delay time is a little too long for my Starlink dish or Anne's iMac computer, right? like sensitive electronics, which is annoying when charging off the grid with a generator because if I turn the generator off, it'll it'll switch over but those items the power will die and we have to go and turn them back on again um, better uh, UPS's are less than 10 milliseconds so it's some people may never notice a problem with it I just noticed it because of that those two items um, the battery chemistry is nickel manganese cobalt uh, uh, it's not as safe from fire or explosion as other power stations that use the lithium iron oxide batteries. So I'm really counting on EcoFlow having the safety protections right. Uh, given my perceived product quality and being a wild, wild, wildly sold unit, I'm pretty confident it'll be okay to have it in an RV. The trade-off for better performance plus smaller size and less weight has been worth the risk to me. Uh, the NMC chemistry also has a lower lifespan of only 800 complete charge discharge cycles to down to 80% capacity remaining versus a rating of over 3,000 for most lithium iron oxide batteries. Again, for me, the trade-off is worth it. So those really are the, the main kind of drawbacks to this system. But as you can see, the, the EcoFlow Delta system has performed well for us, and I'm a fan of it. However, that is based on my needs as a full-time RVer who often dry camps. If I were a home user more than an RV camper, other brands would become as, attra as, as attractive. For example, the Blue Eddy AC200 Max is priced around the same but has safer uh, battery chemistry. As a home backup solution, the extra size, weight, and lower AC charging speed becomes less of an issue. Anyway, there you go. That's my uh, kind of update to the review of the EcoFlow uh, Delta Max and its solar panel. Hope you found that informative. Till next time, Ray from Lovey RV. Cheers, everyone.